But alright, bro. We got the Game Wars, bro. I fought with the Game Wars. We definitely got to react to more Game Wars, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I wanna... I wanna do the Mex the Mexican game wars, like the story of El Chapo. I want I wanna actually I wanna see all that, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I wanna see all that. But we got what? The never ending destruction of the Jacksonville War. Florida's deadly deadliest gang war. I know a little bit about this Jacksonville war, bro. I know a little bit about it, bro. Being here I know at a little home, bit about five it. Five separate shooting scenes in a twelve hour span. That of Wait, how many? five separate shooting scenes in a 12-hour span that of course has leaders from jso calling on the community for help those shootings took place last night and into early morning uh. hours today two people died and on your side zatia collins breaks down what happened damn fulio appears in duval court state sheets gang witness to testify in traffic case Video shows interrogation video. Damn! Jacksonville City Councilman said gang violence is increasing in the city. What seems to be an unfaltering conflict that erupted around 2017 is still eating up the city of Jacksonville, Florida, bringing misery and suffering to this day. Families are being torn apart by the bloodshed that inevitably follows every drill rap song like a dark horse. So oh, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Don't even, bro. Don't even say it. Don't even, don't even think about saying it, nigga. Don't even say it. Just don't even say it, bro. Don't, don't even say it. If you've seen it, you've seen it. Don't say nothing, bro. All right, let's continue, bro. What is certain is the fact that this gang war is still active. Not only that, but Ace. it's getting more and more hectic Fully by the old. day, and there's little we can do to stop it. But what perpetuates this vicious cycle? When will a ceasefire between the big names of this war see a day of light? Those are the real questions here. The community Can't, of Florida the and countless human end. lives are at stake. However, the more we ask, the closer we are to solving the problem. At this point, we're bound to dig deeper and deeper in order to find out what is really going on behind the curtains of the never-ending destruction of the Jacksonville gang war. Get ready to hear all about Florida's deadliest gang war and how it's managed okay. to stay alive until today. Okay. This beef will never end, bro. People die behind this beef, bro. Like, ain't gonna lie. No fed shit. I'm not a fed, bro. I'm not a cop or anything. It's somebody that I know. Somebody that I know. You know what I'm saying? It's somebody that I know. He's from he's from Florida. He's from Florida. He's from uh He's from uh, Pompano, I guess. That's how you say it, bro. Pompano. And bro, he was telling me, bro, uh if some niggas in his city died behind this beef right here. It's niggas in that's not in Jacksonville down behind this beef. Like, I'm dead. I swear to God, I'm dead ass, bro. He told me this shit, bro. I'm so serious, bro. I'm so serious. He told me, bro. He told me he knows somebody who died behind this beef and they lived in his city. Stop use of bourbon? No, I'm so serious, bro. I'm so serious. He told me that this year, bro. This year. Now nah, I'm so serious, bro. ATK as an acronym has a few meanings, and there's no general consensus about what it exactly stands for. I thought it was Ace's aim to kill. Cues, Ace is to kill, and aim to kill. Yeah, I thought, it was, I thought it was aim to kill. It can be heard and tossed around. Members of ATK are spread across the east and west sides of Jacksonville. Members from ATK okay. or crews associated with ATK come from the Melvin Park area of oh, Southwest yeah, Jacksonville Park. Orange Park, yes, located in the west of the city, the 1200 block on the east side. ATK did not originate from one group of people who were tied to a certain block. Rather, it's a fusion comprised of several groups coming from different parts of the city. Okay. One such group is Ace's Crew, which is one of the most notable rappers in Jacksonville. Young and Ace is at the forefront. Young and Ace is often portrayed as the leading figure behind the whole ATK movement, not just his crew. Some of the members okay. of his crew flip the youngin, Quan Quan, 23, aka R. RP to them, man. Jay, Rollo, Trey Shorty, and many others. The 
The second person who got his name tossed around when Queso. leadership is being discussed is Queso. Queso, alongside his brother Boss Goon and ATK Wabrizi, are the original ATK crew members, and they come from Melvin Park. Even though there are several others, the last such crew that's aligned with the ATK, and worth mentioning here. Bro, I ain't gonna lie. Queso a demon. Yeah, Queso is a demon. Wait, would y'all would y'all mess with Queso, bro? I ain't gonna lie. Queso, bro, that nigga got something going on mentally, bro. Something wrong with that him, but something wrong with that boy in the head. I ain't gonna lie to you, boy. Like, but something wrong with that man. I ain't gonna lie to you. Boy, he, the yeah, he's a demon, bro. Coming from the east part of the city, Corbin, Spinavents, and Wapa with the Chapa represents some of the most prominent members of that crew. And on the other hand, our ATK's sworn enemies, the KTAs. KTA. KTA, Julio. or Kill Them All, stems from an OG gangster crew that went by the name PCE, or Problem Child Entertainment. PCE has been known to Jacksonville authorities for quite some time. So much so that they were slammed with a RICO case on November 16th, Damn! 2017. Damn! A whole RICO? According to the police, PCE wasn't only making music, they were also involved in robberies, shooting, drugs, murders. Ten gang members were taken down, but they only paved the way for new members. One such member is Julio Fulio a leading KTA member who literally grew up watching crime. Just as an example, he got his first gun at the age of only 13. Wait, he no what? Wait, he what? Just as an example, he got his first gun at the age of only 13. Got his first was gun? known for constantly beefing with older gang members. Julio Folio Wait, did he say gun or body? What did he just say? Lee grew up watching crime. Just as an example, he got his first gun at the age of only 13. Okay. He was known for constantly beefing with older gang members. Julio Folio comes from Hilltop Village Apartments, the north side of Jacksonville. The part of that I city never that seen Fulio none of this himself when I went to calls though. the most violent side of Jacksonville. Come on, bro! Man, hell ass, bro. I never seen none of this when I went to Jacksonville, though. That's the crazy thing. I never seen none of this, bro. Like, never. I ain't never seen none of this before, bro. KTA had a lot of gang members join their side throughout the years and is in alliance with a number of other gangs from Jacksonville. Apart from the already mentioned Fulio, other KTA members include Kojak, Zion Brown, Techie, Bibby, and so forth. Also, there are a few know. members from the Y&R, and R, aka Young and Reckless, who come from the Jacksonville South and have also been linked to KTA due to the beef that their members had with ATK. Those are Rod K, Bree, Baby Nine, Lil Nine, and Spot em Got em. There's no real beginning of the beef between ATK and KTA members since these two groups and the groups from which they come yeah. from have been in bad blood for a long, long time. It's pretty difficult to find an E. So, like, niggas don't know how, like, what, I wonder what really started the beef, like, what really started it? Before all the killing and all that, what started it? Like, what started it? Exact point of departure it? when all these things started, but more often than not, it's the death of an individual who was related to one of the leading gang members that caused this whole ripple effect. Such was the case with Zion Brown, Fulio's cousin. Zion Brown. Niggas hating on each other. On May 27, 2017, right. Fulio's cousin Zion was at home with his younger sisters and cousins. Being the only adult of the six people inside the house, he was probably looking after the younger ones until someone else came back home. Okay. Sadly for his family, that never happened. Someone from the ATK gang threw a brick through the window of the house in which Zion and the kids were located on North oh. Rawhide Trail. The attacker entered the home, started firing off rounds. His name was DeAndre Thomas, AKA oh. Trey Short, and he was only 19 years old at the time. He was accused of murdering the 18 year old Zion Brown and attempting to murder in two girls who were injured, but they made it out okay. Whoa, this nigga threw a brick inside his home? Damn, a brick? Bro, imagine somebody throwing, imagine somebody throwing a brick inside your crib. You chilling, watching Netflix, watching Netflix. You know what I'm saying? Scrolling on TikTok. That thing, you know, it go boom. They can throw a brick in your door. What? Man. Boy. Our Thomas was arrested man. shortly after the incident. This wasn't his first time getting charged either. 
He was already getting charged with a robbery, which he committed with Young and Ace exactly seven months earlier. The two of them apparently mugged a guy who was selling weed. And at the time, that thing also went south since guns were fired and a one-year-old kid almost got hit with a stray bullet. Whoa. Because of this new case that Trey Shorty got, things were looking a little grim for him. To nobody's surprise, DeAndre Thomas from the ATK got a life sentence in prison after he was found guilty for the passing away of Zion Brown. It's uncertain whether or not someone else was involved in the death of Zion Brown with Trey, but rumor has it that he was not alone before he entered the house. It's highly unlikely that he pull out such a plot entirely on his own, but regardless, guys from KTA took the loss of Zion Brown to the heart. They were looking for retaliation, and nothing else could ever fill the void. Okay. KTA retaliation, so they got back for Zion. Little over a year passed before KTA would have their chance to get back at the ATK gang. On June 5th, 2018, Young and Ace's best friend, Royale Devon Smith Jr., okay. better known for his nickname 23, or okay. sometimes RJ, I heard was this. celebrating his 18th birthday, along with Ace's younger brother, Quan Quan, and Kobe, known as Four. Okay. I always gotta worry about it, but I ain't gonna lie. I don't never, see, we don't never go out to eat, cause we don't do nothing fun. Right, yeah. So, that was like our first time going out like that. Word. And like, I ain't gonna lie, I, I, we was slipping. Just being too low key? Just being. Is moving sloppy. We don't even move like that. They, move, they were moving wrong, bro. We don't even move like that. Mm. And so you're just walking out, and do you think that they were watching you the whole time you were in there? Had to be. Had to be, bro. The four young I, heard, so I heard about this. I heard that they posted a picture at the restaurant before they went inside, I think. They posted a picture. Somebody posted a picture on either their story or some shit like that. And basically, that's how the ops got the low. I'm talking about, bro, damn, and then them niggas just set them up. Yeah, bro, that's an everybody, you know what I'm saying? They, they, bro, them niggas was watching them, but you can't, but when you got ops, bro, you can't move like that. I feel like even if you don't got ops, you don't move like that, bro, because it just could be a random nigga hanging on you. Like, somebody that you don't even know can be hanging on you, bro. Like, it's just, that's just how it is, bro. Celebrating at the Wasabi Japanese like, Steakhouse no located at St. John's at. Town Center. They're also sharing photos on social media, all the places they were hanging out. Yep. And this is when Young and Ace thought that was the mistake that was made. That was well, the mistake, the bro. They were doing something out of the ordinary, like, like having that, food at a restaurant and telling everybody about it. It wasn't a typical thing for them, and as he put it, to let their guard down. On their way back home, the four of them pulled over at a traffic light just to have another car pull up and block them from going anywhere. Then people from the unknown car just started firing at Young and Ace and his brothers. Quan Quan was bro. hit three times, 23 around five times, Dang. and Kobe was hit 12 times. Damn! The person who survived the incident was Young and Ace, who made it to the hospital where he fought for his life. He was hit eight times, and he was trying to protect the little brother who was driving the car. So if you think that was the end of the tragedy that Young and Ace had to endure, you'd be very much mistaken. Damn. The sheer horror only started. Not only did he lose his brother, his friend, and almost his own life, he had to go to court only days after he survived the incident. Because he didn't have health insurance at the time, he still had bullets in him as he appeared in front of the court for violating his probation. Young and Ace served time in jail since he was found guilty, and he missed the funerals of his brother and his friends. Prosecutors even tried to- Dang, bro. But he was going through it, man. But he missed the funeral? Imagine missing your brother's funeral, bro. Dang, boy. To blame Youngin for their death, speculating on the possibility him? of an Show. inside job. But his lawyer proved that the prosecutors were wrong and Youngin was placed on house arrest. In that following year, violence continued on with the ATK members taking out KTA members for what had been done to Young and Ace and his crew. This time around, Dang, we get some crazy diss tracks like never before. Okay. Both from Youngin and from Fulio. Okay. The diss tracks. Oh, I smoke. Oh, I remember when this dropped, bro. On September 25th, 2019, Adrian Gaynor Jr., known to everyone from Jacksonville Gang Life by the name of Bibby, was shot and killed at the Hilltop Village Apartments. The hit was allegedly carried out by ATK's Queso, who had a strong motive that since demon. he lost his brother, Boss Goon, to a hit by KTA just a month prior. Queso went on to brag about it. Oh, my God. 
And this, bro, these, not, I'm talking about, bro, these Florida do not care. Like, look at this, bro. Look at this, bro. He is happy doing this. He's so happy. He's so happy in this picture. Like, bro, what in the world, bro? He's so happy doing this in this picture. Like, bro, he's so happy, bro. He literally dissing somebody that's dead and he's just happy about it, bro. Like, just look at him, bro. He know he know what he's doing is crazy, but he don't care. I'm trying to say that's what I tell you. Queso is a Post demon, photos, bro. Videos on his own social media about it. He even went as far as ridiculing his mother, who urged the community to stop gun violence. Huh? He even went as far as ridiculing his mother, who. Wait, 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 wait. One more time, bro. Posting photos and videos on his own social media about it. He even went as far as ridiculing his mother, who urged the community to stop gun violence. Nigga, what, nigga? No. Boy, you watch your mind, boy. Boy, this man came so out of his mind. He was finna kill his own mama? Boy, you, boy, you, boy. Boy, you is a cold. Boy, I don't even know what to call you. I don't even know what to call him at this point. Nah, I never knew that, bro. I never knew that, bro. Wow. Kazo, bro, holy shit, bro, this man, bro. Bibby wasn't the only victim of the ATK shooters. On the 7th of May, 2019, that, Julio's close friend Techie got shot in an SUV and died. And one year later, on 9th of June, 2020, Little Nine was hit with 12 rounds in broad daylight and also suffered the same fate. Bibby, Techie, and Lil Nine were all referenced in a track that Spin Events, Wapa with the Choppa, and Young and Ace made called Who I Smoke. I remember the that. The track bro. became extremely popular in a surprisingly short amount of time. It the did, music bro. video attracted a lot of attention. The video is currently sitting at 41 million views. 41 million Julio people just didn't seen sit back that. and watch it. Nah, man. He immediately made a track of his own. Fulio got back at ATK with his track When I See You Remix. He rapped about Bro. the 2018 triple homicide in which Young's brother was killed. In the music video, Fulio dances around a graveyard with a print on 23, Cody, and Quan Quan. Sure. They so disrespectful, bro. It's like they have no filter. Happy birthday. This is Fulio's biggest track to date. Both Young and Fulio sampled classic tracks. Who I Smoke sampled Vanessa Carlton's single A Thousand Miles, and When I See You samples the Fantasia, Fantasia. track playing the same name. Using love song samples and mix with sinister and drill lyrics is not something that's been done before, yep. honestly. Both Fulio and Youngin broke the genre, and that's what made these songs so freaking popular, man. Both tracks were released in 2021, but that year didn't spell the end of this vicious war. As a matter of fact, it continues on to this very day. You're right. The aftermath. Okay. What happened after that? Authorities of the city of Jacksonville finally got involved after almost two years of little to no busts. On the 10th of September in 2020, Hakeem Queso Robinson and Abdul Blue Robinson, Queso dad. dad, both got arrested. Queso was charged with second degree murder and his father was charged with being an accessory. All right, so here's the, the rub behind that. On January 15th, 2020, Charles McCormick, AKA Lil Buck, was gunned down by Queso and his accomplice, Dominic Barner. Lil okay. Buck was a Jacksonville-based rapper who earned his spot on the beef radar ever since he allegedly dropped a diss track about Queso's brother after he died. Dominique okay. Barner, who was connected with Queso through ATK, Barner already had a rap sheet of his own, being involved with ATK gang businesses for years now. He already had a second-degree charge to his name for allegedly shooting an innocent man off a bicycle during an exchange he had with his opposition in January of 2019. Off a bike? On the day after the murder, Queso and Dominique followed Lil Buck to a shopping plaza in Merrill Road. After Lil Buck got out of the store, Queso got out of his car and shot him with an assault rifle. Damn. But Queso and Dominique couldn't just get away like that. They were seen by an off-duty police officer, and the two of them were on the run until they crashed the car and had to continue further on foot. Queso and Barner were caught on camera as they were running away. Oh! That nigga in the backyard! <laughs> hey, trying to lose the cops, and they got inside the home of an unknown woman who they kept hostage until they found some different clothes to wear. 
And Yo! they took off with another person who was driving a car that belonged to Queso's dad, which made him an accomplice to all this crime. As mentioned earlier, Queso- Yo! Dad and son committing crimes together? That's crazy. I never heard of nothing like that, though. You and your pops committing crimes together. Y'all knocking niggas off. Y'all going on licks. Y'all going on drills. That's crazy. That is crazy. Yo, that is crazy, bro. Yo, what? I never... Bro, that's crazy, bro. Dad, Yo, dad. Which made him an accomplice to all this crime. I say L dad. As mentioned earlier, Queso was on the run until the 10th of September of 2020 when the police finally caught him. JSO picked up their pace after a while and they finally got to the conclusion that this wasn't Queso's first hit. He was subsequently charged with the murder of Bibby too, not just Lil Buck. As of now, it's uncertain whether or not Queso is ever going to be released from prison, especially since his dad, Abdul Robinson, agreed to testify in front of a court against him. He was tied to the- Oh, I heard about this, bro. So Queso dad snitched on him. The case because his car was used in the little buck hit, but he claims innocence and wants nothing to do with the crimes that his son committed. It seems that he may as well get a life sentence and spend the rest of his life in prison. Uh, perhaps he'll be released early if he shows a sign of change. At least he'll persevere. Not the same can be said for some of the others who are outside. Namely, Jada Youngin, who's a very close man. friend of Young and Ace, was another victim of this Jacksonville war. On July 27, 2022, Jay and his father. That's my birthday. Bro, he died on my birthday, bro. He died on my birthday, bro. Jetty Youngin died on my birthday, bro. Crazy, man. Crazy, crazy, they were sitting crazy. out in front of their Bogalusa home when a black truck arrived and three armed gunmen got out. Jay and his dad tried running inside the home, but two additional gunmen came from the side of the house and opened up fire on a Damn, Jay the Youngin was hit at least eight times and died at a local Bogalusa hospital, not too far from the scene of the shooting. Dang, As it usually bro. goes between KTA and ATK, Jay's death was met with ridicule. KTA's Fulio and Spotum Gotum were pretty quick to make fun of his passing on social media. Fulio posted a number of stories on his Instagram account saying he was glad to see Fulio gone. He even had a sarcastic caption saying, You will be missed, accompanied by the music video from Queso and JD Youngin's track Step On Song. Spot him got him, being on such good terms with the Fulio, also posted disrespectful and mocking stories on Instagram. On the day of Jay's passing, he just posted, Aha! with a number of smiling emojis. Dang. On the other side, Young. Didn't know Spot him got him was with Fulio? Yeah, I didn't know that either, bro. I didn't know he was KTA. And Ace was expressing his regret and sadness because they didn't see eye to eye before his passing, and now there was no way for him to absolve this issue that they once had. End of the line. Dang, bro. The Jacksonville war between ATK and KTA, as well as all the other groups involved, took countless lives, inflicted families with grief, and disrupted entire communities of people. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but a lot of these beefs have been between people who were on good terms at some point in the past. Also, Where? some of them are even relatives, direct cousins, and even Tell brothers. You. Yeah, it brothers. Damn, nigga, nigga beefing. With, imagine you beefing with your own brother. You beefing with your own cousins. Nigga, you want to kill your cousin? Angela, queso, queso, one. Bro, one at, one at Queso Ops was his cousin, bro. I heard Doesn't about that, bro. Doesn't seem to matter at all. It's somewhat paralyzing to see that there's so little room in the hearts of some of these young dudes who live that gang life. They can't even forgive their own blood or their own family members. Can't. People who are tuned in to what's taking but place in Jacksonville are well forgive, aware of what's going on. Their comments show just how concerned they are. As a Jacksonville native, I have the best of hopes, but the lowest of expectations for the future of this gang war. Under other circumstances, they'd be friends, but they're caught up in this situation and nobody is winning. Jacksonville mourns. 
How can this be glorified when it's one of the saddest things I have ever heard of? Crazy, bro. Young men should be living this lifestyle. My prayers and condolences to the family members and may God sure, help bro. heal your souls. Sure, Being completely man. honest here, chances of these two groups ever come to some sort of peaceful resolution Not happening. Is slim to none, bro. Not What's happening. done is done, and there's no way of any of the deceased members are coming back, as right. well as the wounds of those who mourn them being healed easily. That's just the sad reality of life. Drill rap music coming from Jacksonville is nothing less than a reflection of what Young and Ace, Fulio, and every other person involved in the war has gone through. Their style's unique, their lyrics raw and honest, filled with emotions, positive, negative. But, you know, what to what extent, you know? It has to come to an end at some point. It ain't. The only question is, when? It's when not. are these tragedies going to be ending, man? It's not. Let us know what you think about it's Florida's not, deadliest bro. gang war all in the comments it's section not, below. Bro. And if you dug this video, check out this it's next not, one. It's not, bro. It's not. Bro, let, let, me, let me tell you something. These beefs are not ending, bro. It's blood shed behind. It's bodies. People have died behind this beef. No. Once somebody didn't die behind the beef, bro, it's... That's it, bro. It's, bro, no, it's on until niggas just going to keep getting knocked off and knocked off back and forth, bro. That's just how it's going to go. Melvin, Melvin, Mod and Pooh Chat, dead ass nigga doing big things. Yo, chill out, bro. Yo, chill. Stop speaking on my grandson, bitch ass nigga. But nah, bro, it's, this is crazy, bro. I mean... Shit, I wish everybody can just, you know, create peace and make money. But, bro, hey, people die behind this, bro. So, I mean, it ain't never going to end, bro. But, I mean, I, I say now, though, right, as of right now, the beat, that this beat been kind of, like, silent, bro. It been kind of silent, but they ain't been dissing each other. They ain't been dropping diss songs on each other, crazy diss tracks. I, don't, I haven't heard nobody dying from their crew in a cool little minute. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I guess I guess it's quiet for right now. But it ain't going to end, though, just because it's quiet. That don't mean it ended, but it ain't. But it's just, man, it's just a crazy beef, man. I ain't going to lie. It's a crazy beef, man. Crazy.